Hello and welcome back to The Barrow. I am The Barrow White and in this video I will be continuing the career game that I'm playing. This is episode two and we're just getting started so I'll go ahead and get it loaded. All right, we'll call this Barrow 2019-1. So that's a uh, good name. Scratch that. All right, so the last things that I did, looking in the archive, was I escaped the atmosphere, and I believe that I was going to choose the next one, which is Orbit Kerbin. I think that's what I want to do is Orbit Kerbin, though I may have to do some of these other ones um, to get enough science or enough money to upgrade the vehicle assembly building, because I'm probably going to need a... a a better building than I've got right now. But let's go ahead and kind of build one, or build a vessel to get us into orbit. Start with our command module, of course. Put a parachute on that. I did get a heat shield last game, so get the right size of heat shield and put it under there because we will be re entering the atmosphere from an orbit, which means we'll be hitting the atmosphere pretty hot. Put on a decoupler. And let's build an orbital vehicle. So once I get into orbit, I don't need much to, to get around. So I'm gonna see if just this little bit will, will do. It gives us 725 um, thrust, or excuse me, that gives us 725 delta V. Um, I was thinking I could adjust that uh, to ba based on if I'm in, in orbit or if I'm in, I'm in space, but I don't see where that's really an option. Let me see if. Clicking it does anything, it really doesn't. All right, here we go. I click this, it says at altitude, let's say in vacuum. So in vacuum, 928 at sea level, 725. Okay, so that does tell me the difference there. All right, it's a neat new feature that came out with the, the most recent re release of the game. I'll go ahead and close that. So, that's the orbiting stage and the re-entry stage. Actually, if I look at this correctly, I do have it correct. All right, so good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add another decoupler and we will build a stage that will actually put us into orbit. I think what you need is about 3,200 to get into orbit around Kerbin, 3200 delta V. All right. And so if I look at this and I have eight of these little tanks on here and I stick on a swivel rocket, that stage, I'm having a hard time seeing here. I've got my, I've got my own equipment in front of my, in, in my own way. Here we go. So that rocket has 1,987, so I'd have to add another 3,300 to that stage. Oh, that only has 1,260 in that stage, so I'd have to add another 2,000 to that stage for it to be a, a candidate to get us into orbit. So let's put on a few more of these. We're going to make this rocket pretty tall, but the thing is, because that's the problem, and there's many problems, but the problem is, is it's definitely going to want me to build a better uh, launch pad because I'm gonna have so many darn parts because I don't have a better gas tank to put onto this thing so that's 1500 so now we're only talking 1700 more to get us into space let's see what I can do first off let's save this we'll call this orbiter 1 save I'm gonna back out and see if I've got enough science 
and get a better tank because there's a better tank and it only costs 20 so I'm going to go with 20 I'm going to buy that I'm only got 16 left that's not going to get me anything but getting back in here I should now be able to reduce the number of parts that I need to use so let's move this rocket over to the side get rid of this instead of having like 10 of these I should be able to just use five of these see if that'll give us 1500 in that stage it does just short of it okay but now we can go quite a bit taller and that's 1900 so now I'm only looking for 1300 more to get us into uh, an orbit so let's see about adding some temporary stages that are there specifically to get us into orbit all right, so we'll use that decoupler. I'm going to try, but let's see. I'm going to take like four of these. Attach, attach it to this. Good. I'll go ahead and put a nose cone on top of it. And then I'm going to grab it by the decoupler. multiply it by four and add it to the rocket all right so now I still only got 2700 this is not enough all right so I got 1900 in the original stage and it doesn't in these two stages here I guess you would call it so let me get this down here where it belongs this goes up here there we go so now I might be in business because now I've got 4,013. That's well more than I should need. Let's think about what else we might need. A payload to put my science in might be nice just to keep it out of the wind. Let's put that. Let's put that underneath or between the command module and the heat shield. I don't think that thing's super heavy, so it's not going to take away a lot. No, it only took away like a couple hundred of the Delta V. We'll open up the service bay and we're going to put some science in there. First off, we'll put the um, whatever this thing is. Uh, what is it called? Pardon me while I try to there we go. What is that thing called? It is called a Kerbal Engineering System, and that's the thing that goes along with Kerbal Engineer Redux to give us all that extra information, such as apoapsis and altitude and so on and so on. All right, we will measure some temperature. We will see about doing some mystery goo measurements, and we'll do a pressure barometer measurement as well. All right, so we have plenty in there. We'll do one of each while we're at it. And let's see if, there's, if it's even possible for us to launch this rocket with this current configuration. Let's go through and see if I'm missing anything. Shouldn't need any antennas yet. I'm not going anywhere further than in orbit around the planet do need some fins so let's go ahead and do that without these the ascent will be rough I'm going to put one on each one of these boosters and then when I kick them off I'd like to have fins on this thing as well all right that's a lot of fins but that ought to help I already have one of those good there I think this is about as good as I'm going to get for our first try. So let's make sure my staging is right. I have four engines at the bottom that'll, that'll kick on. I can go ahead and actually have this tall rocket kick on at the same time. Then I will disengage the four, rock, the four side engines when they run out of fuel. Then I will unhook that and fire the one that goes around the orbiting engine. And then finally dis. Um, decouple, I keep trying to say disengage, but decouple that 
And it finally, when I try to come back to the planet, use my parachute. Let's hope that's enough. Let's save it and see if it'll actually let me launch it. It won't because it's over 30 parts. Let's go out and see what I can upgrade. Cost me 225 to upgrade the vehicle assembly building. Cost me 50 to upgrade that out there. So I don't actually have the money to do it. So we're going to have to do something inventive. And that is, well, not necessarily inventive, but we're going to have to do something else before we can actually orbit the planet. Let's see what we can do. Haul a swivel engine into suborbital tra trajectory. That's really high, 250,000. And it's all it is, just got to haul it up there. And I'll get five and I'll get 40 something thousand. I can do that. Let's go do that. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's take this engine and let's just remove these things. And it gives me 19,000. It wasn't quite enough, was it? Let's load that back up. Oops, don't save it. Let's load the orbiter. This is definitely gonna get us high enough. I say we just go with this. This should get us as high as we want to go and then some. But we can't because of the sheer number of rockets that or parts that it has. So let's see if it'll allow us to do it by just adding two of these. Now we're still heavier than the launch pad will, will allow. Now we're just going to get rid of this all together and see if 2600 is enough to get us to 250,000 kilometers from the surface of the planet. Let's launch it. Yes. All right. So set throttle to full. Turn on the SAS to get put Jebediah in control or to, to assist us. And we are launching. Ooh, I didn't check my thrust uh, thrust to weight ratio. It's a good chance I will fail this miserably. Got a, more than a minute and a half of thrust in this stage, though. So uh, we should be good. Let's check the it says a suborbital trajectory, and it just means above 70,000. But we're really wanting to get to 250 to 260,000. If we get there, we will achieve the mission. We're about a third of our fuel left, and we're, our apoapsis is only. 17,000, so I'm not feeling really good about this. It looks like this rocket's going to get us into space, and then my my secondary stage, just right here, will get us to the 250,000 that we're shooting for. All right. I'm actually going to wait until we're in space. No, I'm not. It doesn't. It's not going to have a lot, but it should, I think it's going to get us there.
All right. Though I was guessing, it looks like I guessed just about right, because I think we're going to end up at exactly where we were talking about, between 250 and 260,000 kilometers, or meters, excuse me, meters above the planet. I'm going to see if I have any um, science that I can do while I'm here. I am pretty high now. So open these doors and see if any of this is something that will get me some points. I'll log the temperature. Now I've already done that. I'll log the pressure data. Ah, that still gives me something. Good. I will log the mystery goo. I get something off of that. Good. And of course, I will do a crew report. I've already done the crew report up here. So with all of that said and done, I'm going to use the time warp to go ahead and get us up to the goal height. Oh, I don't feel like we got there. We did get there. I, I, do, I warped a lot faster than I thought to. Oh, I forgot. Here's something that I, that I need to remember when I'm messing with warp is that... Uh, once you get to a certain altitude, you can go to much faster warp speeds. And that's what I just did without paying attention. And so it warped super fast all the way up and started falling all the way down uh, before I even noticed. That's because I think it was above 200,000 or maybe it's 120,000. Regardless, I'm falling pretty heavily now, uh, pretty fast. So as I get closer to the atmosphere, I probably use the gas that I have in here just to slow me down a little bit and then I'll separate. Yeah, I'll wait till I get like 100,000 and then I'm going to slow me down a bit. I don't need to hit the atmosphere screaming at 1500 meters per second. See, it had full warp, but capabilities. There we go. Now I'm gonna slow. I'm gonna slow me down a bit. Oh, what the heck is that? And I'm out. I'll throw that down to the planet. And hope that my heat shield hit, uh, holds well. It looks pretty good. And I've got nothing extrude, it, it, sticking out on the sides. So I'm feeling pretty good. Though I am falling awful fast. I just got to rely on the atmosphere to slow me down. I hope that it does. I don't know if falling straight into the atmosphere like this will slow me down fast enough. Especially since I'm about ready to hit a mountain. I'm only 12,000 meters above and I'm still burning up. 8,000, 7,000. Oh, 6,000, 5,000. Oh. Fortunately, I'm slowing down 3,000. I'm, I'm white, so there we go. All right. There for a second, I thought I was going to hit a mountain. Am I, gonna, am I gonna slow down? I'm not. Holy smokes, I made a terrible mistake there, but survived it simply because of the the heat shield. The game actually allows you to explode one part before it'll explode another. So that was bad playing on my part. But you can expect a lot of that if you watch this series that don't know what I'm doing. Don't, and, I know just enough that I'll guess the rest and usually guess poorly. So anyhow, let's see if uh, I can go get out and do a crew report, or let's do an EVA in the mountains. I haven't done one of those before. I don't know if I can do a sample, a ground sample here or not. Let's let's take a look, see if if I can. I'll walk around the mountains.
It won't let me put a flag down, so I guess I can't claim this mountain as my own. And EVA report is, so it's, there's no like uh, ground sample or whatever it's called, surface sample. Let's go ahead and recover this vessel. I had to get 27 science, or I have a total of 27 science now. So let's see if that's enough to get me anything good. I don't think it is. No, need 45 at all of these levels here. But I do have 92,000 now, so I should be able to upgrade this. And go back into the vehicle assembly building and load my orbiter. There we go. Now I'm just going to test to see if it will actually let me launch it. It will. Okay. So that was sloppy, but it did work. We got to the point where I got enough money to be able to afford to upgrade my launch pad. And now I'm, I'm going to be able to launch this vehicle. So hold on tight. You might have another fiasco coming soon. All right, turn on the pilot assist, crank up the throttle, check my staging. All five engines are on. Decouple the four side engines. Decouple the orbiting stage, turn on the orbiting engine, decouple, and parachute. And my goal is to uh, orbit Kerbin. Here we go. Right. It's a little sloppy, but it's spinning, and I think it's because those fins that I put on just don't necessarily uh, line up perfectly. Plus, uh, no, what it is, it's, it's wobbly as hell because because um, I don't have any struts of any kind. All right, Apple Apps is, is pretty good. All right, I'm already... All right, good. I've got an Apple Apps that'll put me in orbit. just kind of go up until I get in the right spot to kick in the engines to orbit. I'm sure any expert or any even person with reasonable skill in this game would see that ascent and think, wow, what a mess. But considering it's early game, I don't have any structural things to keep the, the rocket a little less wobbly. I feel that that was not too bad. I don't know why the RCS is on. I think I accidentally hit that. But here in about 15 seconds, I'm gonna kick in these engines. And then I had, once I throw these off, I should have no problem at all um, getting into orbit with what's left in that central rocket. All right, here we go. still have 50 seconds of fuel in this. And I'm sure the orbit's slowly getting towards circular. 35 seconds of fuel. This number here is coming down nicely. What we'll see is it'll come all the way to zero and it'll quickly run up 
to a positive number, and when it gets over 70, then I'm in orbit. All right, I have 10 seconds of fuel left in that, and it's coming positive now, good. And I'm in orbit. Okay, that's good. I probably should have spent my money to upgrade my um, my astronaut complex so that I could do an EVA. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to the Space Center. Upgrade the astronaut complex for 75000 Go over to the tracking station and get back in the orbiter. All right, and let's do that EVA I've been wanting to do for a while now. Ha ha, EVA report, eight science, nice. We'll board and get back in. We'll open up these doors and just run all of the different uh, experiments that I have. 2.3, doesn't seem like a lot. I thought being in orbit would give me something new, but apparently it doesn't. Once you're above a certain altitude, it looks like you already get credit for all of that. So I have all of those experiments done, and I'll go ahead and do a crew report. Eh, nothing different there either. So I didn't even need this rocket here. I could almost get to the moon, but not quite. That would be pushing it. So what I think I'll do is I don't want this junk floating around in space, so I'm going to kind of aim this backwards. And deorbit. Well, that didn't work as well as I thought it was going to. I'm going to aim this backwards, deorbit, so I get my periapsis. I don't feel like I am in orbit. Yep. I thought I made it to orbit, but this now is only 49,000. Nope, I'm good. But I am sinking into the planet, which is fine. That was my goal anyhow. I guess just that little burst of fuel, a uh, uh, little burst that I put really made a difference there. So let's do this. I'm going to slow this down even a little bit more. Oh yeah, definitely. Just that little burst does it. I'm going to separate. We'll let that crash into the planet. I hope it doesn't kill anybody. I'm trying to avoid space junk, but I'm not really trying to avoid uh, casualties on the ground like I probably should. I'm not a very um, people conscious uh, space program. I'm more worried about my astronauts in space running into space junk, you know what I mean? All right, so really, our periapsis is 39. I'm gonna separate this too. And just float down and, and just end up crashing into the ground. Bye junk, we'll kind of watch our junk. So now what I'm going to do is just wait until I uh, hit the atmosphere kind of fast. And start to heat up. Then I'll slow down the time warp. And hope that it slows me down enough to safely land on the planet. It will. All right. 
right, well, Jebediah seems to be having a good time. I think it's really all that matters. I thought that I would slow down faster than this. Especially at this uh, warp speed, but we're we're slowing down. My periapsis is dropping. It's, it, basically, I'm going to crash into the ground. I'm getting a little bit of red glow here. It looks like. Yep. I will cancel this. Get get my rear end pointed so that my heat shield is protecting me a little bit. Go back to the warp. There we go. We're finally hitting that atmosphere. And so what I'm going to do now is go back and forth between uh, time warp and uh, putting my my direction in the, the right direction. I wonder where those other parts were. I thought that they would be glowing. Oh, there they are. They're not very far away from me. Look at that. Looking at the map, where am I? I'm going to crash about right here. Bleeding off speed slowly. little warp. What happens during warp though is that the rear end of your ship will drift out of the direction you want to be going and um, it can start to heat up. And if you have any equipment or things on the outside it could really uh, catch so much heat that it, it can explode if you're not careful. So careful when using time warp. slowed down enough that we're finally out of the atmosphere or we're so thick into the atmosphere and going slow enough that we're no longer um, having that high friction with the atmosphere. All right. So when I get down to about under 10,000, I hope that I have gotten slow enough that I can turn that parachute on. All right, it's going to yellow. It's going to white. Good. must be over mountains because there's a 3,000 meter difference between the apoapsis and the terrain. So I'll pop that parachute and then I'll use time warp until I get closer to the ground. this and doesn't explode on hit it hit the ground so hard that I break I learned a lesson last time don't don't come to the atmosphere straight down you do not slow down enough you do not slow down fast enough all right just 140 meters to go 100 50 30, 20, 10, landed. Oh, and now I'm gonna roll down a mountain. I am on a mountainside. It probably won't let me, it'll let me ugh, come on. It won't let me recover. If I would have been quick about it, I could have recovered then, but now I'm just gonna roll down this mountainside for a little bit. Come on, stop. If I would have hit recover before it started getting a little bit of speed, I could be done with this already. Lesson learned. If you have a crappy landing in the mountains, 
hit recover fast before you start to roll because this might take a little while. <laughs> let's uh let's time warp I'm never rolling fast never more than a meter a second and Jebediah is having a great time he's not getting dizzy he doesn't look sick oh now I'm going fast I must have found a steep spot in the mountain shit Jebediah I'm so sorry I hope I don't kill you Now I'm rolling the other direction. What the heck is going on? You know what? I actually have a little bit of control over all of this. Let me recover. Let me recover. Ah. Seventy-seven science. Good. All right, so I think that those adventures were enough for one episode. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the roll down the mountain and the inept way of, uh, of flying. There's more to come, so come back soon, and we'll see you again. Have a great one. Bye.